morning, programmers, video gamers, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the channel of the Ten All Nights. Man, it feels good to be in business. <laughs> I'm just going to say real quick that it really does feel good to be in business, even if this might be my only video. I would like to also say real quick that I really do hope to use this channel and put up some more videos. Now then, this video comes to you on YouTube because of a contractor with a class from my college, which I must complete in order to keep my honor scholarship. This is very, very, very important. <laughs> Let's just say that, uh, multitasking. <laughs> I need to multitask. Okay. You know how to I want to draw a connection between my major and the class in question. My major, for those who are curious, for those of you who are curious, is computer science. Well, my class is... I'm going to sidetrack for a minute. I'm majoring in computer science because I hope to specialize at a four-year college and move on to become a video game programmer and developer. I've always been fascinated by computers, technology, and video games. And I mean always. I would say it was probably when I first picked up a GameCube controller that I first became interested in the subject. And that is also what I hope to make this channel about. The tips tricks, stories, and hints from the old tin knight, or an old knight made of tin, or in other words, a metaphorical knight. Um, well, well, there you go. Uh, that's, well, that's partly irrelevant. That's partly irrelevant. Because, at least, irrelevant to the video in question that we're doing right now. Moving on to the subject at hand, my class that I must connect to my major is pre-calculus. This was harder than it sounds. Now, math is core to computer programming. Core, the bedrock. Case in point. Visual Basic, a beginner programming language used too often to teach, well, beginners. This programming language is steeped in math. All of its core basic elements are based upon mathematical elements or principles. But don't just take my word for it. Take the word of Microsoft, the people behind Visual Studio, the program used to program with Visual Basic and Visual Basic itself, which states in its online programming guide, uh, quote, a Visual Basic function, uh, excuse me, uh, a Visual Basic function is a series of Visual Basic statements enclosed by the function and end function statements. A function's purpose is to receive output Receive input, perform a task, and return output. A function A, like an algebraic function, like the one I'm looking at, <laughs> which has variables whose job is to receive input, which performs a task by doing a calculation and returns an output on the other side of the equal sign. Of. Oh, and before I forget, the link to the statement from the program guide will be posted in the description below, if I can manage that. For those of you who like to check sources to ensure they are credible, which I hope for most of you these days. I hope most of you do that these days. Tech news is everywhere these days. Now, if the simulator between functions is not enough, several predefined functions exist within Visual Basic, including the three basic core trigonometric functions. Sine, cosine, and tangent, written as S-I-N, C-O-S, and 
T-A-N, in Visual Basic. A VBTutor.net has something to add to that point. Right? We have a section on these three functions and their use in Visual Basic. Noting uh, that because of the way Visual Basic functions, their use is a little unusual. Usually these three functions use degrees. However, Visual Basic cannot handle degrees. So instead, uh, you must use a, a particular other inbuilt function to convert degrees into, <laughs> into another thing the function can handle. That being radians. The function to do the conversion is the same as a textbook trigonometric equation. That being, uh, think, uh, pi radians equals 180 degrees. So, to convert to degrees, multiply the degree by pi over 180. Also, again, the link to vbtutor.net will be in the description if I can pull that off. Um, where's the pencil? Ah, forget it. <laughs> Ultimately, pre-calculus and programming uh, are intricately linked. But there is something uh, more solid to connect them, albeit a bit fringe. Much of the math that programming is based around is discrete math. Now, what is discrete math? I hear some of you saying, well, I'll tell you. Discrete math is not a branch of math like algebra or calculus, at least according to cse.buffalo.edu, but instead, simply a description of, of several branches of math, a set of branches of math, well, that are defined as being discrete rather than continuous. These types of math deal with statements in logic, uh, integers, uh, and graphs predominantly. Statements in logic being the core of most beginner programming languages. Even the definition of a function given by Microsoft in the programming guide notes that it is made up of statements, even if those statements are not necessarily the same type of statement. But more importantly, they're connected in yet another way. Boolean algebra. Boolean algebra is a type of algebra, a branch of algebra, where the variables are not defined or have the value of numbers, but rather have the value of the truth values, true and false. Boolean algebra is a, a case of discrete math. And Boolean algebra is a key component in even the most basic of programming. It's textbook stuff. After all, even the most basic programs must have some kind of way to distinguish true from false, yes from no, which is often done using if statements or true from false. For those who don't quite get it, csc.buffalo.edu again provides an excellent Noting uh, with a better definition that a mathematical set that can be counted uh, is discrete. You can count on your fingers. So, for example, integers, which is all negative and positive numbers, negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, those are, by definition, uh, discrete, because they can be counted. Even rational numbers are discrete, and that includes decimals and fractions. However, real numbers, which include stuff like pi, is continuous, because it, at least in theory, goes on forever and thus cannot be counted. That's critical to understand, and there are other ways to define those, but they result in basically the same meaning, and I hope you understand, because we're moving on to the next possible understanding of it, which is uh, its use in academics. Discrete mathematics is used by the University of, City of Chicago, where it is a required course, with the stated goal of the course. <coughs> To 
integrate into the teaching academia the necessary performance of an understanding of mathematics and discrete mathematics and to prepare in the student the necessary understanding of basic needed mathematics needed for pre-calculus. Or, to put it in a way for those not in higher learning, uh, not to offend those who are in higher learning. I know not everybody in that is like that. To present the fundamental notions of discrete mathematics and to integrate the major ideas of mathematics needed for the future study of calculus. To integrate the ideas of mathematics needed for the future study of calculus. That's the very idea and definition of pre-calculus. It's in the name for Pete's sake. Now then, I believe I have sufficiently defined why the two are integrally linked and why both are necessary. Or at least pre-calculus is necessary to understanding programming, and why they're critical. Since I've already explained how Boolean algebra and others are linked, how discrete mathematics is linked to programming, which is the cornerstone of computer science. Now, I have a few final words. Three words for those who are programmers themselves. For those who disagree with me, and who are programmers. One, are you insane? If you of all people should understand what I'm talking about, assuming you've done any actual programming. Uh, two, that was not meant to offend anybody. <laughs> that what I just said, not meant to offend anybody. Not even a little. I'm sorry to offend. If you are my senior in experience, I'm sorry to offend if uh, you have actual mental illness, i.e. are actually insane. I'm sorry. Um, and I'm also sorry if what I said was off the mark, and it's just because I have failed to explain myself sufficiently. Nevertheless, three, I have a few words for those who are even less experienced in programming than I am, who want to go into this field. Never give up. I, I, I know that's cheesy, but it's true. Never give up. You will need grit to learn the basics that you will need for this degree and the skills of computer science. And finally, four for everybody. Please present to me any criticisms, critiques, things you liked about the video so that I can improve in the future. I would very much appreciate it. Good morning and goodbye.